Good afternoon. Are we ready to go, Joel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We are ready. <laughs> call the meeting to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mr. Peterson. Mayor Judd. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Mr. Wayland. Here. Mr. Strand. Arlette Preston in for Strand. Thank you, Arlette. Mr. Campbell. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Steen. Mr. Olson. I'm here. Ms. Carlson. Here. Uh, we are one short for a quorum. Jonathan uh, Judd is. We are have a quorum. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just want to note, I just got word that um, we have a few board members that were directed to a different meeting somehow by clicking on their Outlook invite. Uh, Paul Barthel is working to get them into this meeting. Um, so I don't know if we want to pause for a moment or if you'd like to continue. I, I think we can go over the agenda and do some of those things, Joel. Let's get those done. But I had the same problem. I couldn't get in right away. So I presume that that's the issue we're having with, and I guess we need to fix it. Um, okay. Because we can go through the minutes and then we're going to go through the order of agenda and hope the rest of the people come on board. Uh, Jolly, as you notice, no people come in if you just mentioned that they joined us. Okay. So, uh, do you have a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? So moved, Dardis. Second, Judd. All those in favor say aye. 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 The agenda we're going to change a little bit because uh, uh, John Shockley has to go and talk a little bit about the WIFIA and we, we don't want him to stumble on that. So we're going to let him speak first on two items and then we'll go back to our regular agenda. And Joel has a couple adjustments to make to the agenda. So I'd ask Joel if you would give us the new agenda, what the foundations are. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Chair. Um, so with John leaving at four, I would like to move up agenda item number five and agenda item number 10B to the beginning of the meeting. And that will allow John to get on the call with EPA WIFIA, which is extremely important for us. Uh, the other agenda change, I would like to remove agenda item number 9B, sub bullet point four. Uh, we did not receive the uh, uh, amendment in time from Oracle in order to include it. And the the last change I would like, or I would suggest that um, items number 9B, 1, 2, and 3 be placed on consent agenda. They are contracting actions, but there's zero budget dollar contracting actions. Um, and it may speed the meeting along if we put them on consent. So. Very good, yes. Rick Steen. You may uh, there was a number of us on a different site that was on the calendar invite. You may want to take a roll call or figure out who actually joined since the roll call was taken. So you've joined. Who else has joined? Uh, Chad did. Chad. Kevin Campbell. Okay. Do we have Dave Pepcorn? I think he's an 83. Good. I hope you can hear me. Yep, we can hear you. So everybody now is on board, right, Don? We got everybody? Ms. Carlson, are you on? So. Yes, um, I'm on. Thank you. Does this happen yesterday, too? Just curious as to what's going on with that, because that most some of us just went to our calendar invite. I don't know where the other invite came from. Paul, do you want to address that, please? Or Joel? It, yeah, Paul just made me aware. Um, I guess I'm not sure without having some time to look into it. I, I, 
is Paul was with us actually. <laughs> the other so, group. so this is this is Martin. Um, I don't know that I have an answer, but I do know how I got in. I used the link in the Outlook calendar to get into the meeting. The one in Teams calendar sends you to the wrong spot. So it depends on which calendar you go to, at least on my system. So if I opened up Teams and went to the Teams calendar, I got the wrong meeting. If I opened up Outlook and clicked on the link in the Outlook invite, I got into the right meeting. So it may be a Teams versus Outlook issue, at least it was for me. And I think that's correct, Martin. This is Don. Um, Chris had the same issue yesterday. So I instructed Chris today to go just click on the link that's on your calendar and it went right in. So there's some there's some kind of glitch that is um, cropping up between the calendar item and Teams. Um, so we'll have to dig into that and see what's going on. OK, so you guys will address that before our next meeting. Thank you. And I just want to keep moving along, Joel, because we'd like to make sure John can speak. So can I have a motion to approve the new agenda? Order of agenda. Judge, so move. Move. And Dart is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We have a consent agenda to uh, approve financial report and voucher report plus 9B, 1, 2, and 3. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Wayland. Second, Hendrickson. Very good. Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd? Aye. Mr. Hendrickson? Mr. Popcorn? Aye. Mr. Wayne? Aye. Mrs. Preston? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Olson? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. That is everyone. Very good. Everybody got back on. Appreciate that. So, John Shockley, we'll go to you. You're going to talk to us about item 5 and 10B. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thank you for moving up my agenda items as I do have a call with EPA with you at 4. Uh, PM Central Time. Uh, the first item I have is an amendment to the New Star uh, work uh, for preliminary uh, activities related to the realignment uh, and relocation of the line. So, New Star has a line that runs underneath the channel. Uh, we previously entered into an agreement with them uh, to allow for the relocation of the pipeline. Uh, as part of that, they have to work with the a public service commission and get approvals regarding the corridor and so they were running a little bit over on their budget uh, this is uh, this adds about fifty nine thousand dollars to the budget because it um, my understanding is this is the final amount uh, but they just ran a little bit over budget when we had the four hundred thousand dollars it was an estimate so while it's a little bit over um, its cost that we would have to pay to relocate the line anyways uh, and working with new star in this process early on helps to save costs later on during the process uh, i was not at the finance committee yesterday i had some trouble with the link also uh, so i don't know if finance committee recommended approval of this or not um, mayor dardis did you guys approve it yes sir okay so we need a confirmation of that. Can I have a motion to approve, please? So Steen, moved, Carlson. Carlson and Steen, I got on that. Uh, any discussion or questions of John? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Ed. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson? Aye. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mr. Wayland? Aye. Mrs. Preston? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. 
Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. That is everyone. Very good. John, Executive Director Performance Review Process. Yeah, so this was something that uh, pursuant to the Executive Director's uh, employment agreement with the authority, the authority is supposed to conduct uh, an evaluation of the exec Executive Director uh, once per year. Uh, what I'm proposing uh, is that uh, we would prepare, I prepared a form along with the mayor we would send out the form for the board members to uh, provide their input. Uh, and then I would summarize those and the chair and myself would meet with the executive director to go over uh, his review. Uh, as part of that, I believe the executive director also has provided, uh, will be providing his goals for 2021. Um, don't necessarily need to address that right now, but that is one of the things that was part of the review process is to look at what the executive director's goals are uh, and then kind of uh, it's a iterative process between the board and the director to make sure that you're on board with what your goals are going to be for this coming year and then next year I would see the evaluation as trying to measure uh, how successful you've been moving towards those goals that, uh, you agree to as a board and the executive director agrees to as a board. So, anybody have any questions of John and what we wanted to do? So we wanted to allow all board members to comment on Joel's performance and what they think he's doing or how he's doing, so that we can get a better idea. And Joel at least has an idea what people think of his performance and how he's doing. In addition to that, there is a salary adjustment that has to be done, and I felt that the new chair coming in, uh, Mayor Judd and that the chair of the Cass County, uh, since those uh, rotate as chairs, that they sit down with the discussion about any salary adjustment. Um, so that's not a bigger part of the board. And then those recommendations would all be brought in summation, like John said, to the board next month. Joel, any comment? Uh, no, I, I think that sounds great. Um, Mr. Chair, obviously, uh, I think this is a great process. It's going to be able to, uh, we'll be able to dig in to um, make sure that we have alignment between the executive director and the board on the board's wishes. Uh, and so I always look for opportunities to be able to engage in, in this effort. And um, I, I think I'll present my uh, goals here at the end of the meeting. Just um, to kick, uh, kick that off. Uh, we have a lot of great things coming in 2021, and uh, I think the goals that I've developed to this point uh, are really um, going to be beneficial for the accomplishments that we hope to achieve. Uh, and so I'll look forward to feedback uh, after I've presented my goals today. I will be sending each of the board members um, a more of a formal uh, outline of those goals uh, as well for that will assist in their review as well. So thank you. John Shockley, any other comments? Um, no, uh, I did have, after we're done with this, I did have one quick update for the board though. Okay, any of the members have any questions of this? Want to change it, want to do anything different or are we okay to go ahead this process this way? Very good, uh, do we need any action on that, Dr. Or John Shockley? Um, no, I think as long as the board's okay with it, uh, I'll be sending out uh, probably Monday uh, to the board members the evaluation form with some instructions on how to fill it out and then a timeline to get the responses back to me. Okay, what's the other thing? You're going to tell us some good news? You can't yeah. tell us something if it's bad. <laughs> well, it's, it's good news, uh, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to let the board know, uh, and this goes to what I always refer to as the alphabet soup of financing for the project. Uh, yesterday afternoon, USDOT approved the authority for a $296 million allocation of private activity bonds or referred to as PABs. Um, the reason this is important is that the we had sought the allocation so that the P3 developers could utilize that as a financing vehicle for 
uh, their funding of the project. Uh, PABs are short uh, with private activity bonds that allows a private party to issue financing at tax exempt rates. And when you're dealing with such a large uh, amount of money, 296 million, you know, a difference of 50 to 100 basis points uh, turns into real money very quickly. And so we did receive the allocation. Uh, we'll receive formal notification uh, about a week. Uh, there takes some a couple days to draft the letter, uh, but I'd been in contact with uh, USDOT. Uh, this has been a process oh, probably over the last year, year and a half that we've worked uh, to respond to their questions and advocate to get this allocation. I would note that we were invited that in January, there'll be an additional allocation available and we're going to ask for an additional 36 million uh, of allocation because another project in the country didn't isn't likely to use their allocation before the end of this calendar year. And so that would bring our total allocation of PABs up to 330 million. Uh, so it's it's good news for the project. It's kind of a complex financing issue, but uh, this has been one of the financial products that we've been chasing down for the entire project. So decreases the cost of the P3 people. So it's a it's a gain for us again, right, John? Right. It reduces, it makes their cost of capital lower, which in turn makes their bids and our availability payments lower. So any anytime you can lower the cost, the financial cost for the teams, it translates into a better bid, which lowers the cost for the project. And and that's what that that's why it's a little bit of a complex uh, item. Uh, to talk about publicly, but it's it's good news for the project. So, great work, thanks, John. Good luck with your WIFIA call. And um, as long as I, uh, one other quick update to the board on uh, the WIFIA loan. Uh, we are working through the final details of the term sheet. Um, the because of the end of the year, uh, WIFIA has been under some uh, pressure to uh, get this over to OMB. And so I was not able to bring the term sheet to finance committee and I'm not able to bring the term sheet to uh, the board as of today's date because we're still finan uh, finalizing a few details. Uh, but I have been in, uh, I have been uh, working with Joel and providing Joel updates as to how those negotiations have been going. Uh, the end product uh, without going too far in the detail, uh, the quite the proposal that we put forward in our application for the loan is where we're going to end up. Uh, they had initially asked for some additional security and some additional uh, requirements be imposed upon the project, uh, but they've since backed away from those during the negotiations. And so uh, the, the other major takeaway is that as part of any, any type of revenue fund loan, you're required to maintain what's referred to as a debt reserve fund. Uh, WIFIA has agreed to allow us to increase the size of the WIFIA loan and fund uh, the reserve out of the WIFIA loan, which is advantageous to the authority uh, because it's a lower cost of capital. So we're not, not borrowing higher money, cost of capital money to put in a debt service reserve and also agreed to reduce that to a six month reserve instead of a year. So I'll, all very positive. Um, the interest rate that we're currently using for planning purposes for closing is 2.1% interest. Um, that may dip a little bit lower before by the time we get to closing, but that's currently our planning rate. And that would be for a loan that uh, is 35 years, it's the maturity is 35 years after substantial completion. Uh, and the first year, five years are no payments. Uh, after construction. So the first payment for the authority isn't technically due till 2032. Uh, and then the final maturity of the loan will be 2061. So can certainly okay. ask questions, but. Any questions of the board? I'll let you go, Joel, John. Thank you. Thank Joel, you. you're on with the executive report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just I'll briefly go over some uh, things that occurred in the last month. Uh, we've had a busy month at the Diversion Authority. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome our new communications director, 
Uh, Jennifer Darling um, came on board on November 2nd, and she's been quickly getting up to speed on a, a number of different issues. Uh, and Jennifer, if you're on, uh, I guess I'd, I'd like to take a minute and have uh, have yourself uh, uh, introduce you to the board. Thanks so much, Joel. Um, hello, everyone. I just want to say that uh, there's a great foundation in the team here that I'm really happy to be a part of. I'll share a little bit about my background of more than 20 years in both communications and technology. I started my career actually in local and state government in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm originally from, and have since developed a wealth of experience in many global regions, um, working for companies like Coca-Cola, Expedia, CNN, and leading some pretty broad teams across the globe in uh, communications uh, from internal, external, digital, social media. So really happy to be a part of this team and join this effort and excited about all that's to come. So thanks so much, Joel. All right. Thanks, Jennifer, and welcome aboard. We're glad you're here. Thank you. A uh, couple of items uh, related to the P3 um, procurement process. Uh, we had some recent one-on-one uh, discussions with the proposers. Those all went very well. Uh, I, I continue to be amazed at uh, many of the innovative concepts coming out of those discussions. Uh, I'm very excited to, to see what the final product ends up being when we get the technical bids. Um, I, I think we're going to be uh, um, very blown away by some of the uh, innovative contracting mechanisms that uh, that are going to be incorporated into that. So the one-on-one -on -one discussions continue. Uh, we continue to remain on schedule with our, our latest schedule for the uh, procurement. Um, we did get draft uh, six out uh, last Friday. Uh, that was a very uh, um, big effort from our P3 team uh, from Jacobs. So thank you for uh, all the hard work you did on that. Um, and we'll have one more last round here of one-on-ones um, prior to releasing the final draft of the RFP. Um, so we're getting very, very close uh, and in uh, kind of wrapping up um, that RFP and, and finalizing all the details contained within it. Uh, so another were you very, able to move uh, the timetable you know, up at all in the P3? Yeah, we're working on that, uh, Mr. Chair. So we have notified uh, the developers that we would we would wish to receive financial proposals prior to crossover. Um, we have not received feedback from the developers. Um, however, they are aware of, of why we would want to receive those by that point. I think it would also be um, in the developers' best interest uh, as far as our legislative ask is concerned and the certainty that that would provide all of us in uh, in wrapping up our funding needs with the state of North Dakota. So I will certainly keep the board up to date if there's any changes to that schedule and or what we hear back from the development teams. Very good. Um, the third item here is the State Water Commission agreement that is in your packet today. Uh, that agreement was received for the uh, $44 million uh, from the last uh, uh, legislative session. Uh, with the execution of that agreement today, we'll be able to access an additional $44 million in state grant funds at a 50% cost share. Um, so that's in addition to the approximate 80 million that we have already outstanding um, with the State Water Commission at the moment. Um, so that really uh, gives us, uh, beefs up our cash reserves as we start to move into um, executing the P3 agreement. Uh, the fourth item here uh, was the settlement agreement. The board is well aware of the provisions of the agreement, so I'm not going to go through those, um, but we did execute that agreement. Uh, so I congratulate the board members uh, for having the, uh, the foresight and the fortitude um, to find consensus with, our, um, with the upstream impacted folks and entities. Uh, John and I continue to work with the attorneys from uh, the different parties in order to get the formal settlement agreement wrapped up. Uh, we hope to do that within the next couple of weeks. We may require a special board meeting um, to address that and to uh, finalize that uh, with signatures. 
once that is done, um, a stipulation will be submitted to all of the various courts from all of the parties uh, with the request to dismiss all of the lawsuits. Uh, the last item here, uh, which is a bit more technical in nature, but uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, I'm just as important in, as some of the others. Uh, we did receive uh, the Office of the State Engineer construction permit approval for the uh, channel construction. Um, and that's important. Uh, that gives us the ability to construct the channel uh, once we uh, procure the P3 developer. Um, and it was a, a, a very um, uh, detailed and uh, a large effort that was uh, put into that by a number of different folks. I'd like to thank Jason Benson, Matt Stamness, um, Nathan Borboom, uh, Robert Zimmerman. Uh, they were instrumental in assisting uh, us with discussions to basically take a, uh, uh, a very well ingrained permitting process and work with the Office of State Engineer to uh, in, impart innovation and uh, um, flexibility in their permitting uh, for a project, which is a very much different, obviously, with, a, with our uh, split delivery P3 process than what they're used to. Um, and so we worked through a number of large issues and items. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the Office of the State Engineer was comfortable with the approach that we're all taking and they did issue the permit for construction. Um, and so with, with that, I will take any questions or comments from uh, any of the board. Any questions? I see no hands up, Joel. Is All Terry right. Williams gonna report today? Is she on or do you know? Yes, Joel? she is. I believe oh. Terry's on, yep. Oh, there that <laughs> voice is in the darkness. Hello, Mr. Chair, this is Terry Williams, Corps of Engineers. Uh, you should see my monthly update on the screen. Uh, item number one, continue to make great progress at the diversion inlet structure. I think the video is gonna be shown later. They're pouring the, white, the right dam walls. All of the big structure slabs are in place. And we're at about a 40% completion on construction. The required completion date is still in June of 2023. Uh, the item number two, wild rice. Um, we've got a big pour coming up next week. Uh, it's similar to the diversion inlet structure, big pour that was 1,100 yards. This one's going to be about 1,700 yards. And it's uh, the control, half of the control structure slab. We're at about 14% complete at the wild rice, and the completion date remains October of 23. Moving into the design elements, Red River structure design remains on schedule. Um, We've got a 65% review that's complete. Our team's going over all the comments and moving into 95% design. And that review will start in about April of next year. We're still on track to have final plans and specs um, in August, September of 21. And then item number four, reach SC1. Uh, those plans and specs are approved. They're all signed off on, ready to go. We'll go out for bids once we have lands and permits. So those are on the shelf waiting uh, to go out for bids. Reach SC2A design, this is item number five. Uh, we're still getting ready for that 65% design to start, or uh, review to start in January, uh, still on schedule. Item number six, I-29, uh, we're in the final stages of getting all the reviews done, the final reviews and signing off on plans and specs. Since the last diversion authority meeting, the federal court did grant us permission to go ahead with um, construction of this. And so um, the first part of the two-part contracting process was issued on 28 October where um, we'll pre-qualify contractors and then they'll be allowed to submit bids uh, in the second part. Uh, number seven, drain 27 wetland mitigation, still on schedule with that design. Uh, the 95% is scheduled to start in about March, uh, awarding that contract in, um, fiscal year 21. Number eight, geomorph surveys. Uh, that was pretty exciting to get that final round done. Um, we had a lot of pre-project surveys to do for environmental purposes, and that was our basically our last pre-project round of geomorph, the final report due in the spring. And so this is the cheat sheet of all of the federal work. And then here's a couple of pictures uh, at the diversion inlet structure where that Downstream uh, step slab was poured on Veterans Day. 
pretty cold day. Um, this is the heated enclosure and that was about a 700 cubic yard pour. With that, are there any questions? Any questions? Thanks, Terry. It looks like you're making great progress. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Public outreach, Roger Olson. Yeah, this is Roger. Uh, thank you. We were introduced to our new communication director, Jennifer Darling, uh, just as you were today by executive director, uh, Joel. And we look forward to working with her and, and going forward on, on public outreach. We're getting um, a few questions on our mailing on the Clomer, and we work to answer those questions, and uh, it seems like that's going pretty well. We're also going to be working uh, with the new legislators that were elected this uh, past November, uh, bringing them up to speed and really asking them for support uh, for the diversion. And then I'd like to uh, give our appreciation to outgoing committee member, uh, Ken Pollack. Ken was, uh, was always engaged in the committee and in any of the committees that he was on uh, from the county commission to, um, to the Cass County Joint Board. And Ken was a, it was a great asset and we thank him for his uh, years of service. And now we would like to present the flyover videos and Terry Williams is gonna narrate for us. Terry. Thank you, Roger. So this is the, the flyover for the, the diversion inlet structure. And I believe it was flown on Veterans Day, uh, November 11th. Um, it's not showing up very well on my screen, but I know on that day, the uh, that downstream stepped slab was poured. And so you would see the uh, heated enclosure and then the concrete, concrete pump truck uh, putting concrete in that enclosure. Um, I think what else you're seeing is that um, there's, we're they've started we're a white snowstorm right now, Terry. White snowstorm. Yeah. I'm just seeing the white screen as well. <laughs> you can keep telling us what we would have saw. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like I said in my report, um, they they're pouring the right dam walls. Um, they've got pretty much all the left dam walls done and. Um, they're going to mobilize in the, the pile uh, driving equipment to start in the downstream area, in the stilling basin area. So it's, it's fun to see those walls coming up, and then you can see the texture on the walls as well. It's kind of a brick pattern. Over. Joel, are we going to have to do this later time, or what do you want to do? Yeah, let's just skip past the flyover videos. Apparently, they're not uh, working in the actual environment. So. Roger, you just want to tell us if it looked pretty cool or what? I think the videos are, are very cool, and I think they're a great tool. Um, for Executive Director Joel, when he gets out to Bismarck and he can uh, present these videos and, you know, they, they'll they actually see what's happening, you know, not just a, a rendering, but, you know, this project's going forward. And I think they're just a great aid. Yeah, we had met with the legislative team today and they, they really went back to the time they came here and saw the progress we're making and the continued progress really helps them get the money for us for the project. Do you have anything else, Roger? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. And Rocky, you have anything? 
Mr. Chair, I, I do not have anything extra. I think things are going uh, are, are pretty well with the property owners, and I think that's been our biggest concern over the last couple of months since the Clomer is making sure the property owners get the answers they need and are getting linked up with the land acquisition professionals. And we continue to field calls and the website has seen a big uptick on our lands page. So hopefully that is answering their questions as well. And so I think that's the, the phase we're in is making sure land acquisition meets its deadlines so that um, when the construction starts on the P3, we're good to go. Very good. Thank you, Roger and Rocky. Land manager, Mary Shirley, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, that's a great lead in for land acquisition and property mitigation status. You've um, you've got the cute little colored squares in your packet there so you can see what the progress is. We're busy keeping up with the core and getting things lined up for the P3 when they get started. And I'm told we are on time. Um, we've since last month acquired five more pro parcels. Those uh, we're focusing right now on the channel, the Southern Embankment Reach 1, and the I-29 road rays. Appraisals are being conducted for Drain 27 wetland and the Red River control structure. The Cass County Commission has been busy with uh, six public meetings with property owners, and we have authorized the Cass County Joint Water Resource District to utilize last resort eminent domain from those meetings. Um, as was mentioned earlier, there is the close the post Pomar outreach um, and there's been follow ups with property owners to address their concerns and responding to questions. Land agents have been following up with those property owners. The biologic and geomorphic um, monitoring program continues. Uh, we continue uh, scoping and data gathering for phase two study for the crown appraisals flowage easement valuations, and uh, we should have some more information for action next month as we get into phase two of that. And, and then we continue to um, develop the crop insurance, and um, some of that is being incorporated into the settlement term sheet. And uh, so that really wraps up my report. Busy time, thanks to the Cass County Joint Water Resource District for all their work. and. Um, if Dan or Roger has anything to add, please do. Oh, this is Roger. Um, yeah, things are going quite well. Uh, the land agents, I feel, are doing a good job of explaining to the landowners their options and just leading them through the process. You know, our biggest hang up is value, uh, our appraised value versus um what the landowners feel their land is worth so so we just continue to go through the process and and uh just keep chugging along thank you thanks roger and there is there is going we are scheduled to um to auction that that property down south i think it's december no january I, I don't have Eric here to back me up and tell me the date, but maybe Joel knows. Sorry, Commissioner Sherling, I don't know the exact date of the auction, but it will be within the next uh, two months here. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but anyway, so that's our report and we'll stand for questions. Thank you very much. Any questions of Mary? Thank you, Commissioner, I appreciate it. Finance, uh, Mayor Dardis, are you ready? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Chairman, uh, Finance Committee met yesterday. I uh, had a good meeting. A uh, number of items were discussed. Uh, uh, the board approval contract actions for Beaver Creek, CH2M, uh, the Hills Jacobs Amendment, and Aon Amendment. Uh, we also had uh, a number of executive director approved contract actions which obviously fall within the parameters and the authority of the executive director, which he shared with us. In other business, uh, the New Star Amendment and resolution, uh, which was an increase of about uh, $59,000 plus. We also went over and discussed the State Water Commission agreement for cost share reimbursement again. Uh, the Land Acquisition Directive for North Dakota, a Land Acquisition Directive for Minnesota, 
which Mr. Eric Dodds of AE2S uh, walked us through that and the differences between the two. And we also did a walk through the property acquisition status report, and that was given by Mr. Dodds. Uh, that basically was the items that were covered by the finance committee. If you have any questions, we'd stand for questions. Or qu Mayor Dardis, would I assume we have to do an action item on the state water commission agreements? I would, I would, I would guess we do. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would so move that we approve the state water commission agreements of cost share reimbursement as presented in the attachment. Steen second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Aye. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Wayland. Aye. Mrs. Preston. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Mrs. Sherlene. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you. Mayor Dardis, any other comments on the finance report? No, sir. That concludes the report. Thank you. Thank you. Executive Director of Goals, Joel Paulson, to explain. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, John Shockley previewed to the board earlier in the uh, meeting today. Uh, one of the requirements of the executive director is to provide the board um, goals for the upcoming calendar year. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to do a short presentation of those goals. Uh, and then I want to uh, I'll supply the board um, with a uh, more formal copy after the meeting here. Uh, and as mentioned before, um, that can be used as a, a part of the performance review and commenting period. Uh, that we'll have over the course of the next month. So uh, I'll get started here. Uh, this will be brief, uh, but I'll hit the high points. Uh, so when I when I thought of the, the goals for next year, I really wanted to put them into the context, uh, a strategic context of where we are um, and where we're going. And so uh, currently where we are, uh, we've been building the executive team this mm -hmm. year. Uh, we're concluding the preliminary engineering and planning phase and moving into the implementation phase. Uh, and we're sitting very, uh, very well as far as creating that team to execute the implementation phase. Uh, a recap, obviously, I was hired on September 1st of 2019. Uh, we got Ms. Don Lindblom, <laughs> sorry, Lindblom, uh, hired uh, April 1st of 2020. Uh, we hired Mr. Chris Bakigard on July 1st of 2020 as our engineering director and uh, obviously happy to have uh, Ms. Jennifer Darling here uh, starting on November 2nd of 2020. We have a current advertisement for the director of finance and we hope to fill that position on January 2nd. Uh, and then I'm working with Chris Bakigard uh, in on a position for a construction and maintenance compliance manager um, which would hopefully come early next year. That does fit within the organizational structure that was presented for 2020, um, but uh, you know it took us some time to define the position, um, and that would be a position that would be under Mr. Chris Bakigard um, and would be focused on uh, the construction of the P3, uh, the maintenance of uh, all of the lands that we own, uh, as well as uh, compliance with permitting and uh, jurisdictional compliance uh, of our activities within the townships, the counties, uh, and the states. Um, and so I'll move to the next slide here. So where are we going? Our primary goal is permanent flood protection with project completion by the spring of 2028. Um, our secondary goal is building the foundation and infrastructure for the long-term administration, operation and maintenance of the program from 2028 and beyond. Um, so we'll have another shift in 2028 when the project is complete, and we want to ensure that we're focused on that and we're focused on the positions that can either transition into the long-term operation and maintenance or uh, positions that would need to be eliminated. So how do we get there? Um, well, I've I've got five strategic goals in front of you. These are the 
framework and the bed bedrock for the diversion authority. Uh, they focus around teamwork, culture and values, communication, leadership, and fiscal integrity. So the first goal is teamwork, which is absolutely imperative to delivering a project of this magnitude in an efficient uh, manner. Um, so we're going to continue to foster and develop our existing partnerships uh, with the U.S. Corps of Engineers, the states of North Dakota and Minnesota, the local member entities, um, and, and other regulatory members that, that we work with. Um, I'm happy to report, um, you know, we, we did have a call with, with Colonel Jansen this last week. Uh, the Corps shares the same uh, sentiment that we do uh, and really strengthening our partnership and moving forward with the implementation, um, you know, hand in hand and, uh, and ensuring we're doing it in a manner that, uh, that we're both flexible uh, and we're both, we both have the final goal in mind of flood protection uh, by the spring of 2028. Uh, we also want to and hope to identify and focus on new partnerships. Uh, these are partnerships that as we build this program, we're looking to incorporate and enhance and leverage um, the project and the value that it can provide for the community. Uh, so these are things such as uh, working with MetroCog on the recreational features that could potentially be implemented in the future. Uh, working with other nonprofits and other community partnership groups um, to focus on value added items that could be added to the project uh, for the benefit of our communities. Uh, we're also looking to develop a highly functional diversion authority leadership team and we are in the process of hiring and we will be developing and retaining the best talent we can to deliver this project with the most innovation and focused on value for the communities that it will protect. The second goal is culture and values. Developing a culture that is fair, caring, consistent, and always doing the right thing. This is extremely important because this project impacts so many people, both in a positive and in a negative way. And we need to be cognizant of that. And uh, amid, Commissioner Sherling had uh, mentioned earlier during her lands report, um, you know, the, the work that they're doing and progressing through. And I'd just like to give her a special thanks as well as the Cass County Joint uh, Board and the Cass County Commission. Uh, we're asking them to do a very difficult part of this project. And I must say they are doing a fabulous job. Uh, along with culture and values is the values component. Um, so we're hiring people and incorporating them into the diversion authority uh, on the basis of their knowledge, their traditional views, their balance, and their pragmatism. Uh, so values drive behaviors, behaviors drive the culture of the organization, uh, and we hope to continue to keep a primary focus on our culture and values and really spreading those throughout the entire diversion authority team. The third goal is communications. Uh, you know, this is this is such a, uh, a portion that is near and dear to me, and and I think it's something that uh, I've heard the most of uh, since assuming this role uh, almost a little bit more than a year ago. In how do we communicate uh, both internally and externally, and we're changing the way we do those things, and we're focused on providing efficiency and effectiveness in our communication strategies. Uh, I do believe uh, Ms. Darling is going to enhance our uh, internal and external communications, um, and I'm very excited to see some additional changes in how we go about this. And, th and this is a time where we can change from justifying the project to implementing the project and uh, being more proactive, transparent, timely, and accurate in our communication strategy. Uh, throughout this process, I hope to work with Jennifer and the Public Outreach Board to identify and define six core messages that permeate all of our communication strategies. I've taken an initial stab at this and I will send that out with my uh, goals uh, in, in, as an effort to begin that discussion. Uh, we also hope to proactively build our institutional memory for key FMDA staff. Uh, and this is important as we move forward, 
Uh, one of the things that we want to be able to do is document the things that work right. This is the first project of its kind in the nation, uh, the first split delivery P3 uh, delivered project. And there's things that we can learn on this and share with other projects and other non-federal and federal entities uh, for the benefit of the entire nation. And we truly are uh, plowing a new trail here uh, for the nation. And it's pretty exciting to see it happening right here at home in Fargo-Moorhead. The fourth goal is leadership and specifically both project leadership and team leadership. Project leadership, again, we're creating that learning environment for the administration of large projects. Uh, we're leading the nation to revolutionize how projects such as, the, as these are implemented. And this is our chance to show the nation how we do things in the upper Midwest, our work ethic, and how we treat others and try to find compromise in what we do. Uh, team leadership is extremely important. In order to deliver this project effectively, we need to create the following items for our team, a leadership vocabulary, a leadership playbook, and leadership culture. I will attempt to create a leadership team that infuses and enhances leadership throughout all of the different members that are working on this project. And the fifth goal is fiscal integrity. I hope to have the uh, finance director on board uh, by January 1st and we'll be, uh, we'll be transferring a number of functions from the fiscal agent, the city of Fargo, as well as adding um, a lot of additional functions to the diversion authority. Uh, those are budget functions, financial reporting, internal controls, stakeholder funding and debt management, cash disbursements, and of course, one of the biggest items, insurance and risk management for the long-term nature of this program. Um, this is something that is new to the Diversion Authority. We've always relied on member entities and our, um, our program management consultants to administer these functions. And this will be our opportunity to prop up and stand up long-term fiscal integrity within the Diversion Authority. And that's what I have for my presentation, Mr. Chair. Uh, certainly open to any questions, but I do expect this to be a dialogue over the next month. Um, certainly looking forward to input from the board members during that time period um, and uh, in tweaking and adjusting these goals as necessary to have complete alignment with the board as we move into this uh, extremely exciting and important year for, for the Diversion Authority. Uh, any members of the board want to add a sixth item for Joel? I think there was one item, Joel, you forgot is to be done in 2026. I think you forgot that by accident. <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Chair. You always keep me on my toes. If we can get done by 2026 and we beat our, uh, our federal core partners, I do think there's a steak dinner on the line for you, Mayor Mahoney. So I sure hope so. Uh, <laughs> any other business of the board? Any questions of Joel? Mayor Judd, do you want to give us any good uh, thoughts as we end it or into Thanksgiving uh, next week? Yeah, everyone stay safe and healthy. You know, and thank you for all your work uh, and all facets. I know we got uh, a lot going on, so just greatly appreciate uh, everyone uh, working, but just be sure to uh, take care of yourselves and your families. Kevin Campbell, I want to especially thank you for coming back on board. I know you've gone through a very difficult time, but we very much uh, appreciate your leadership. And I know it's been a tough time for you, but thanks for coming back to us. Thank you, Mary. Any other business? Very good. Motion to adjourn. All right, I think we'll stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>